What's up? Okay, it's one o'clock. I'm gonna call the April 2nd Board of Commissioner meeting to order. Today we'll have the prayer by Commissioner Sarkella and the pledge by Commissioner. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we, we come to you with, with grateful hearts as we're thankful that we can gather in a free country. We ask that you would be with us today in our meeting, give us uh, wisdom to make sound decisions for our friends and neighbors, and we're especially grateful for your son Jesus who came to save us all. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you for all nations, under God, and indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. Leslie, roll call, please. District 1, Chairman John Block. Present. District 2, Commissioner Roger Ballard. Present. District 3, Commissioner Gary Heberling. Present. District 4, Commissioner Bill Sarkella. Here. District 5, Commissioner Christine Lee is absent. District 6, Commissioner Evans Ehart. Here. District 7, Commissioner John Moody. Here. Thank you, Leslie. You're welcome. There is one correction to our agenda. There's one name on the Parks and Recreation Board that chose to remove their name from pension for that. With that correction, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda as corrected. So moved. I have a motion from Commissioner Ballard, support from Commissioner Ehart to adopt the agenda as amended. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carried, agenda is adopted. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to approve our meeting minutes from March 19th. I'll make that motion, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion from Commissioner Eberling, <clears throat> supported by Commissioner Moody, to approve the meeting minutes from March 19th. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. We received your correspondence from Jody through email the other day. We're going to move into commissioner reports. And we'll start with Commissioner Moody. New report. I was on vacation. Okay. <laughs> I have nothing to report myself, Bill. I was on vacation, but I did go to Applegate last night. All right. And uh, they're looking with uh, possibly uh, coordinating with the Sheriff Department on doing some of their uh, zoning issues. That they, and the Sheriff Department's done a lot with other townships and villages as well. Um, they did get some fire department grants for some equipment there as well, and they basically approved their annual budget and uh, entertained some mowing bids and actually got some bids to have some work done there. That's all I have. Very good. Thank you, Bill. Gary? Uh, tonight I have Watertown Township meeting and also have the uh, Parks and Recreation um, the County meeting right after that. Last night I attended the uh, Nazi City Council meeting and... Um, <clears throat> Several things were discussed, and I won't go through them all, but I hit some of the highlights. So, one of them that came up last night, the uh, Arts and Council that put on the lunch here, music um, throughout the summer. Uh, they're looking for new members, so if anybody wants to get involved with that, uh, they're looking for new members. Mm -hmm. They're also looking for donations. They're going to uh, refurbish the gazebo out here on the lawn, <clears throat> some of the seats, and stain it and things. So. Uh, they're looking for donations for that, and I guess you would get a hold of the Sandusky City Council, somebody at the office. I, I, I guess they didn't say who to get a hold of. Um, it was also voted on last night. The uh, mental health is going to be uh, going into a ten-year lease with the um, uh, with the city, and uh, what that means is uh, they're going to uh, utilize a car wash at the DPW uh, building. And uh, with that, uh, they're going to be paying the, part of the utilities and things like that mental health is. And then second of all, uh, the city is going to go ahead and uh, add a, um, a bathroom and a changing room and stuff for the uh, policeman. Uh, also, they approved fundraisers at the, the Diamond Trail. And uh, then the city manager gave an update on the water main insulation uh, in the city currently going on and what they're going to be doing the next uh, few weeks. So, into my report. Thank you, Gary. Mm -hmm. sure. I attended Evergreen Township's meeting on Tuesday, the 26th. Uh, they had a long discussion on roads. Cody, the uh, road commission foreman, was there. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of time prioritizing road projects, trying to utilize their budget to the best that they can. Um, as with most townships, uh, they have a lot more projects than they have monies available. So they try to spend it wisely. Uh, last night, I attended the City of Marlette's Council meeting. Uh, they had discussion on their wastewater treatment plant operations contract. 
they had three submitted. Um, they tabled it until further review. They also had a uh, approval of the MDOT right away on their agenda, which they tabled and pending more information on that project and costs to the city. And they had a last minute proposal from the police chief on a new uh, tornado siren control system, which would be activated by the National Weather Service rather than the, the uh, fire department. So chances of missing a, a warning would be much less if non-existent. And I believe that's it. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate everyone's commissioner reports. Nathan, your administrator report, please. Thank you. Uh, first off, just wanted to note, uh, in case anybody forgot, next week we will have a statutory meeting on the 9th, uh, so there will be three meetings this month. Um, the second thing I wanted to note, uh, continuing discussions on the materials management plans uh, with Tuscola County, Huron County, and Lapeer County. Uh, we had a meeting two, two weeks ago, uh, roughly a week and a half to two weeks ago. Um, at that time, it was determined that the next steps that would need to be taken um, to for us to enter into agreements collectively to work with one another is each county has to um, bring a, a multi-county agreement with each individual county. So like we would have three that I would bring before you guys, one to work with Tuscola, one to work with Lapeer, and one to work with Lapeer. We're all gonna be working together on this project. Um, we have to individually specify that we're working with each of those counties. So um, I foresee that coming before you guys uh, uh, as as we move forward with that. It still seems to be in our, in myself and Joanne have been attending the meetings, uh, Joanne Byer, our recycling director. I think it's the best avenue for us. Um, it will allow us to um, work with another county, I guess, but it was determined that, again, we're pretty self-sustaining here, so we really won't need to provide any service to another county or seek out another service through them, but it will allow us to capture additional funding because we are agreeing to um, be a part of a collective regional effort, I guess, here on, on that project. So um, the nice part with that, too, if there was any concerns is, um, we would have the ability to step out from that group if we ever determined it didn't make sense for us to remain in. But um, just for being a part of that for the first three years, we'll capture an additional $10,000 for working with those other counties. So are we the only county that we're looking to work with that has recycling and a waste facility? Uh, of that, in that group? Yep. Yes, we are, John. Uh, Huron County doesn't have recycling, but they have a landfill. Tuscola has um, recycling doesn't have a landfill and then Lapeer, they have some independent haulers who do recycling, but it doesn't sound like their county has a recycling facility. I think there's a private entity over there who does a little bit of recycling as well. Um, so yeah, we're, we're a little bit unique and that's why we wanted to make sure through discussions that, um, people understood we really don't need a lot of support, but I also wanted them to know that I didn't really feel as though we could take on a lot more volume like at our recycling center um, from other counties because of the staffing Ooh. situation. So um, they were pretty good with that. It sounds like Tuscola is gonna handle a lot of the additional recycling that um, bump over from Tuscola or Huron. And with this change, it's going to affect the haulers too because anybody who currently does curbside garbage pickup is supposed to be mandated by this to also do curbside recycling. Some haulers are aware of that. Some said they haven't heard that yet. So it'll kind of be interesting when that rolls out, uh, how that affects them. If we see some haulers say they're not gonna, you know, do it if they don't comply with what would come with that. Um, it was gonna be a little bit of a, I guess a little bit of a learning curve for all of us with this. So that requirement for a trash hauler in Sanilac County to also haul recycling, that's a state mm -hmm. statute change. That is going to be, yes. Okay. Yep. So um another thing I wanted to touch on the clock on the courthouse lawn is not keeping time. They came last year and did repair that clock. Um it was a repair that the county took on. Um, I did get a couple bids at this point for what the repairs would be. 
Um, there's a couple options we could go. We could just do a mechanical repair. We could do a mechanical and cosmetic repair, or there could be a full replacement. Um, none of the options are going to be cheap. Um, the strict, strictly mechanical repairs would be roughly $8,500. If you wanted a mechanical and cosmetic repair, you're looking at just over $15,000. And if you want a full replacement or a new clock, it's going to be over $30,000. So I think we need to um, really think about, I guess, what we're looking at that purpose of that clock to serve? Is it more for looks? Is it necessary that that clock keep time for any reason? Because I think with where it's situated on the lawn, um, I don't know if there is a ton of people who really use it as a um, clock per se. I think it's more the, the look of it, I guess, on the lawn. Um, but we can have further discussions on that. I just wanted to let you guys know I have gathered that because we have a local community a uh, member who's very passionate about that clock and has been going around and um, trying to, I think, get word out that he's trying to solicit funds on that. And I told him at this point, we need to be patient because we need to determine what's in the best interest of the county moving forward on this clock. Yeah, Jonathan, uh, I, I actually took time before me this morning to come in and talk to Nathan specifically about that. It's my, it's my own personal feeling. And thought on it, and it, 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 I, this is the first time I share it with you guys. And that clock was put there. Uh, it was actually put down by the St. Old St. Clair gas station. It was hit, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, there was money raised again to revamp it. And then uh, the city, I believe, didn't want it there. So at that time, I guess the commissioners at that time said we could put it here. But we've put a lot of money into that clock over the years, uh, refurbishing it and you know, putting new systems in it. And, and just my thought, um, I'm not so sure that everybody looks at that or very few people look at the tell time. And it's a great, I don't know if you want to call this historical piece or whatever, it looks nice, but I'm not sure um, that every three years our taxpayers want us to stick $8,500 or $15,000 in it because it's not a longevity thing, the technology that's in there. So my thought was, to, and just my thought to to Nathan, and I, and I want to run by uh, you, the commissioners, I'm not so sure we want to keep putting money in it. I, I know you said there was some rust on there. Nick said, clean that up, um, set it at 1 o'clock, and it looks nice setting there, but I'm not so sure that anybody uses that clock to tell time. And I think it's more of a a piece to add to our to our campus here and uh, so what we do with it you know that's up to everybody in here but uh, um, it was a great thought at the time but it's costing the taxpayers a lot of money it's going to be over the years and uh, i would rather just use it as, as a centerpiece for for our campus you know and again that's just my thought i mean that's that's probably the one of the better solutions is to not continuously invest in the, in the clocks being useful other than it has historical context and value and it looks at nice out there. Yeah. Did it originally own, was owned by the city of Sandusky? That's well, uh, we had an individual, yeah, yes, to answer your question, uh, we had an individual in the community uh, take up donations for it and part of it was for donations for the clock and I think um, maybe a couple years later, uh, that person started taking donations for um, bricks around it that was used towards the clock. And um, so it, the thought was good. Don't I don't want anybody to misunderstand me, but I don't think we looked at the long term what the cost would be. And it's it's getting costly. And I haven't got with Nick how often, but I, I, I want to say it's every three to four years. We've got to go in and redo that clock and spend money on it. You know. Yeah, some money was spent last year. It was kind of a Band-Aid repair, and they said we can't do that anymore. So, I mean, that was um, almost $1,000 that was spent last year on it. So, and in talking to them, they said, you know, you've got to understand it's Michigan. Uh, those clocks, uh, you know, are out in all the elements. Um, it's just, it's it's hard on them. And they said what they've seen some other communities do, if they've made the same determination, like Commissioner Heberlin was talking about, um, you know, just kind of having it more as a monument on the lawn, um, they sometimes had like a local artist or somebody do like a painting and maybe put in over one of the clocks or something of whether it be the city or, you know, they said a significant building in the county or something and kind of put in there mm -hmm. um, to cover 
<clears throat> but they said some just leave them, some will just leave them sit there on a time too. So there's okay. there's some options. But I just wanted to you get that out there because there's a, there's a lot of rumors flying around about it at this point. Right. The idea of the paintings is an interesting idea. I'm glad you looked into that. And found that that might be a good option because then you get to keep you know the the clock itself and the history that goes with it, but. Either that or the clock face to say one o'clock or noon or whatever it would be. So is that the general consensus we have is 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 to try to I mean I, I just can't see spending eighty five hundred dollars uh, or more. And that's the low end. Yeah, that's a very basic and that's no cosmetic um, repair at all. That's a mechanical repair that's going to last three three to five years. Was... And they can't even guarantee that, John. But they said they would they would gut it, but they said there's no guarantee on the life lifetime on that. All right. Does anybody have any further thoughts on the clock? Anything further in your report, Nathan? No, that's all. Okay. Any questions for Nathan? Seeing none, we will move on. Thank you, Nathan. That was a good report. Good conversation on the clock. Um, I think the only thing we can really do other, I mean, it sounds like we have consensus that we need to find something other than spend money to do the repair. So. Um, at this time, I'll call for public comments pertaining to the agenda. Are there any public comments pertaining to the agenda today? I'd like to know if Dan Kelly's uh, from our township has been here on something. Is that pertaining to today's agenda? Is there an action item related? I don't know, because he, he's been promised me he would be coming to see me, and he hasn't. What township are you from? Sandlake. Sandlake Township. And what was your issue you were dealing with? Dog license. Okay. With uh, my animals got killed by dogs, and this is a state law. Oh, that you need to be compensated for the loss of the animals. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, that's not anything that we'll handle here in the meeting today. That's fine. But it's if, fine. But I if, just want to know if he's been here. Yeah. But if you'd be willing to stick around till after the meeting, then we can make sure that we, whatever we got to get figured out, we'll get it taken okay. care of. Okay. Because I got the information here. Okay. Here you go. Your name. Ma'am, can I have your name, please? Sue Geiger. G U I G A R. Thank you. Any further public comment related to the agenda today? Seeing none, we are going to move on. We have interviews. First up is our health board, Walt Badro. Walt, step up, tell us a little bit about yourself. Walt Badro, uh, supervisor of Ward Township. Uh, been on the board in Wood Township as a trustee for the past eight years uh, prior to becoming supervisor in the health board for the last couple of years. And i um, like to think that I provide maybe an alternative opinion to things uh, occasionally and that might be helpful. Don't know for sure. Um, I would like to uh, continue uh, serving the county on the health board. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Walt? Okay. Well, Walt, we have you here, Walt. Good to have you here. Good to see you. Well, thank you. Good to be here. Yep. We appreciate being here, Walt. Thank you for your service on the Board of Health. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Walt. <clears throat> okay. At this time, we're going to move on to interviews for our Parks and Recreation Board. Is Matt Bazat here? Matt couldn't be here today. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, Chris Kopatz. Chris, are you here? Chris, welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good to see you. Step up. Tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Chris Kopatz. Um, in my letter of interest, I did uh, give you guys a little bit of background of uh, what I do. Um, just finished up my first year on the County Park Board. It's been a pleasure and an honor. So I'm going to go each for giving an opportunity to serve. Uh, we started a lot of projects in the pet course the last three years, and I'd love the opportunity to see them through. Um, I know what's Gary's, or I'm sorry, as Commissioner Ballard has probably told you guys, I'm not always a yes man, but I do feel that I treat the procedures and um, communicate effectively and respectfully. And I just like to get my point across and accept any of the decisions that are made through the park board, but it has been a pleasure. I'd like that to stay if you guys would have. Okay, very good. Does anybody have any questions for Chris? Seeing none, Chris, we appreciate your service. Thank you for being here today. Yep. Is Jeff McCarty here today? Jeff, welcome. Oh. Tell us a little bit about yourself. 
Uh, I was in the military for 33 years, Air Force and Navy, finally done with that. Uh, used to work for the county years ago. I was on the village council in Carsonville, did a fire department for 44 years. Uh, just want to be part of the parks board. I do a lot of camping, not just in San Juan County. All to the bottom. I just want to see it keep continuing to grow. Okay, very good. Any questions for Jeff? Seeing none, Jeff, thank you for being here today. We appreciate your service to your nation and to your community. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Is Brian McCummins here today? Brian, welcome. I understand you tried to reach me. My phone somehow deactivated, unbeknownst to me, over the weekend. Okay. So I was like out there somewhere. <laughs> I'm Brian McCummins, uh, born and raised on Dairy Farm, by Brown City. Currently live in uh, Maple Valley Township, outside of Brown City. Um, just uh, wanting to help out with the parks. We, uh, our family uses the parks. We've uh, camped uh, quite a bit at Evergreen. Love the improvements that they've done over the years. And just interested in helping out and keeping the uh, progress going and as far as the parks is concerned. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for Brian? See none, Brian. We appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that will conclude interviews for our health board and parks and recreation board. At this time, I will entertain a motion to appoint Walt Badrill for a five-year term expiring four fifteen of two thousand twenty-nine. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion from Commissioner Heberling, supported by Commissioner Ballard, to appoint Walt Badrill to the Board of Health for a five-year term. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion is carried. Congratulations, Walt. You're on the Board of Health for five more years. Thank you. <laughs> okay, at this time, we have our Parks and Recreation Committee. We have four applicants vying for two seats. So I will entertain a motion to enter Matt Bazak, Chris Kopass, Jeff McCarty, and Brian McCummins into contention, and we will vote with our ballots. I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Heberlein, Support. supported by Commissioner Ehart. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye, aye. Opposed? Do I have a motion to close? Yeah, motion to close nominations. Okay, motion. I have a motion I'll support from aye. Commissioner Ehart, supported by Commissioner Sarkella. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Nominations are closed. Okay. So we have two for Matt Bazat, three for Chris Kopaz, five for Jeff McCarty, and two for Brian McCummins. So Chris Kopaz and Jeff McCarty. Okay. Thank you, Leslie. You're Chris, welcome. congratulations. You're reappointed to the Parks and Recreation Board. And Jeff, congratulations. You are appointed to the Parks and Recreation Board. Brian, we appreciate your interest in being here today. If something comes up in the future, we certainly encourage you to reach out.
I see nothing further for appointments to standing committees or boards, so we don't no need for 13B or 14. So we're going to move on to 15 general resolutions. We have a resolution amending the resolution of August 18, 2020, proving the establishment of a property assessed clean energy based program. Whereas the Board of Commissioners of Sandlot County, Michigan, previously adopted resolution of August 18, 2020, a resolution approving the establishment of a property assessed clean energy program, PACE program, and created a PACE district pursuant to Act Number 270, Public Acts of Michigan 2010 amended for the purpose of promoting the use of renewable energy systems and energy efficient improvements by owners of certain real property and whereas the board of commissioners established a pace program as described in the pace report so as provided a property owner based method of finance and funds for projects including owner arranged financing from a commercial lender which funds and finances shall be secured and repaid by assessments on the property benefited with the agreement of the record owners such that no county monies general county taxes or county credit of any kind whatsoever shall be pledged, committed, impaired, or used in connection with any project as required by the subject to the PACE statute. And whereas the Board of Commissioners hereby finds the financing PACE projects as a valid public purpose because it stimulates the economic development, improves property values, reduces energy costs, reduces greenhouse gas emissions, and increases employment in the county. And whereas the type of projects that may now be financed under the PACE program include, but are not limited to, Insulation in walls, roofs, floors, foundations, or heating and cooling distribution systems, storm windows and doors, multi glazed windows and doors, heat absorbing or heat reflecting glaze and coated window and door systems, and additional glazing reductions in glass area and other window and door system modifications that reduce energy consumption. Automatic energy control systems, heating, ventilation, or air conditioning, and distribution system modifications or replacements, caulking, weather stripping, and air sealing replacement or modification of lightning fissures to reduce the energy use of lighting systems. Energy recovery systems, day lighting systems, insulation, or upgrade of electrical wiring or outlets to be charged, a motor vehicle that is fully or partially powered by electricity. Measures to reduce the usage of water or increase the efficiency of water usage. Any other installation or modification of equipment devices or materials approved as a utility cost saving measures by the Board of Commissioners. A fixture product, a device, or interacting group of fixtures, products, or devices on the customer side. Yeah, customer side of the meter that use one of the or more renewable energy resources to generate electricity. Renewable energy resources include, but are not limited to, biomass, solar, or solar thermal energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, and methane gas captured from the landfill. Whereas Public Act 2070 of 2010, 270 of 2010, has been recently amended with the passage of Senate Bills 302 and 303 of 2023, and whereas the projects that may now be financed under the PACE program have been amended to provide the option for property owners of retrofits or rehab projects to waive the energy savings guarantee for new construction. The energy savings guarantee is no longer required, require that new construction be built above Michigan's energy code, allowing for the financing of env environmental hazard projects, include a mitigation of lead, heavy metal, or PFAs, contamination, and portable water systems. Mitigation of lead paint contamination, mitigation of effects of floods or drought that increase the resistance of property against severe weather. Whereas it has been determined that the PACE program and PACE report approved on August 18th, 2020 requires amendment to be consistent with the amended statute and now therefore be resolved that the San Lac County Board of Commissioners amends resolution of August 18, 2020, approving amendments to the San Lac PACE program and adopts amended PACE program report attached to this resolution. Be it further resolved that all provisions of the PACE program and PACE report not amended here and shall remain in full force and effect. But further be resolved that all resolutions and parts of resolutions are to the extent of any conflict with the resolution hereby rescinded. Therefore, be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the proceedings of the Sandlot County Board of Commissioners this second day of April 2024. I have a resolution offered by Commissioner Ehart. Is there support? Support. I have support from Commissioner Ballard. Is there discussion? Yes, and uh, I believe line one, two, three, four, five, for the fourth word as line eight, 
Is, does anybody understand what this means? Electrical wiring or outlets to charge a motor vehicle that is fully partially powered by electricity. Does that mean that anybody can apply for that through this PACE program? Or is that just a home that we're picking out to? This is mainly geared towards commercial properties that are being upgraded. So this would this would allow for someone with like a commercial property that they're that if they're getting involved in the PACE program to find special financing to install those types of devices. So whether it be an electrical charging, you know, gotcha. station. Okay. As right. such. So, thank you. Any further questions related to the resolution? Commissioner Black, I just wanted to know, I believe in correspondence with her too, all, all of these requests would come through the board for approval as well. So mm -hmm. um, it, it wouldn't be things like that you guys wouldn't be aware of. So you guys would have the opportunity to review and approve. Yeah, when this came through, I mean, this was, this was, this clearly happened before, well, Gary, you'd been the only one that was here right. when this was originally approved. So Nathan got with her and dug into it a little bit to make sure that we knew exactly what it was. And it's, it's essentially in the pamphlet that actually explains about as good as anything can. It's an opportunity for people with commercial property to source different avenues of funding for upgrades, you know, and they've added new stuff in lead pipe replacement, windows, things like that. And Nathan, you've done a great job uh, digging into this and giving us all that. Thank you. Any further discussion related to the resolution? Hearing none, Leslie, roll call, please. Commissioner Ehart? Yes. Commissioner Ballard? Yes. Commissioner Sarkella? Yes. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Chairman Block? Yes. Commissioner Heberlin? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Leslie. You're welcome. And Chairman, I would like to, while uh, Commissioner Ehart was reading the resolution, I realized that somebody did not sign their ballot, so we're going to have to redo the ballots. Okay. I'm going to reread. So the, the results were Matt Bazat two, Chris Kopaz three, Jeff McCarty five, and Brian McCummins two. So this is why I give you two ballots. <laughs> if everybody could revote, make sure you sign your ballot. Yeah. First thing he did when he came in, forget to sign the Oh, shoot. We're supposed to sign. Sorry. I need my back. Did it again. Sorry. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> we used to have one thing I asked. Just to test the waters and make us have one and see what everybody else. I'm just happy he shut his phone off. <laughs> Got yeah, really clicking pen. Yeah. But yeah, it won't be a third time. Because there's no more ballots. <laughs> so, sorry. Have been stalled. So, we can pick the positive information. Mm -hmm. time. I'm going to go So this result is Matt Bazat one, Chris Kopez three, Jeff McCarty six, Brian McCummins two. Okay. So still Chris and Jeff. Yep. Does not change the outcome. Yeah. So Chris and Jeff, you are appointed to the board.
Anything further, Leslie? That is all. Okay. Thank you. Um, so we have completed general resolution. So we're going to move into committee reports. We're going to start with Commissioner Ballard. Oh, let's see. On the 22nd, I attended a uh, board retreat for Committee of Mental Health up in uh, Yuckerville. Uh, basically had a couple of presentations from in-house staff um, on where CMH is going and trying to go, um, how to get their mission out there to the public and kind of eliminate that stigma that is associated with mental health. I think they're headed in the right direction. Um, they're doing real well on hiring uh, with that CCBHC grant. Um, their public participation has really gone up. Um, they, they're they preparing, in fact, I think they already started taking walk-ins, which has never been done before. Um, they can take people with uh, minimum mental health issues. Insurance is not an issue now with this because of this grant. So um, you're gonna see a lot of, a lot of big things happening with uh, mental health in the future. Roger, those hirings of people that they're sourcing, is that mainly people from within St. Elliot County that are being hired for those roles? A lot of master's degrees positions, so they take some time to, to right. fill. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, parks, uh, just a, kind of an update on some projects. We are waiting on Eagle, the State Department to issue a, a permit for Evergreen Park so that project can proceed. Um, our Forester Park Maintenance Supervisor, Don Janish, has retired. Um, Don has been with us for four years, did a, did a great job out there. He and the manager worked real well. I, I give them a lot of credit for getting that park really turned around and getting it cleaned up and, and they continue to make improvements out there. Uh, we're working on plans for siding window replacement plus a garage addition on the manager's residence at Evergreen and anticipating the beginning of the, the residence addition at Lexington Park soon. Uh, just got the land use permit completed. Um, I believe we're still working on gas line relocation, some details on that. And that's about it. Um, the Evergreen Sewer Project is near complete. Uh, they did have a water leak that uh, needs to be repaired, but that's not that big of an issue and have to finish the landscaping. Um, I've been up there a couple of times and it's it's amazing the difference that project has made in that North Loop, Chris knows where I'm talking about. Um, the roads are improved, the lots are improved, um, parking pads and, and whatnot. Um, people will have to bear with us. Uh, hopefully we get a good early grass growing season because <laughs> they open in less than a month now, a month from yesterday. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to having that up and running. So that's it. Thank you, Roger. Oh, one other thing. I did sit in on a DTE webinar on the 21st. Um, didn't really get a lot of info out of that. I think that was more geared towards uh, partners with DTE. Was that the one where they were talking about charging stations and yeah, like how they're going to build out that type of infrastructure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like I said, there wasn't, didn't get a lot out of that. I don't think anybody did, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, think, I think it's more of a dog and pony show myself, yeah, in see. my opinion. Got it. Thank you, Roger. Yep. Gary? Yes, uh, having Roger sit on the left side of me and being the head of our parks and recreation saves me a lot of things to say <laughs> because uh, he always gives a very uh, robust, well-defined, positive uh, update on our board. So I'm not going to say anything about our parks and recreation. We had a meeting tonight. And um, the only other thing I got to uh, want to bring up, and I think Nathan kind of alluded to that earlier, we're going to have a meeting uh, uh, our uh, building the ground next Tuesday mm -hmm. uh, to go over and take another look at uh, the animal shelter control. So, end of my report. Thanks, Gary. Bill? Uh, nothing at this time. Okay. Uh, two weeks ago, I had a planning commission meeting. We approved some PA-116 applications. In our last BOC meeting, I indicated that there was a company referred to as First Land Services that had to send a letter to the Board of Commissioners uh, informing us that they were working with DT and signing land leases for a wind project in the county. So I, I reached out to her just to get an idea where, you know, what part of the county are we talking? Never got a response. I reached out a second time last week, still haven't gotten a response. So I'm not sure why they sent us the letter, but apparently they don't want to talk to us very bad. So we'll see where that goes. 
Um, personnel met this morning. Um, just so everyone's aware, there's going to be some change over in the equalization office. Nathan, I think with personnel today, we put together a reasonable plan on how we're going to try to work towards finding some new people for that office. It's I, some very detailed, specific work. You're not going to find somebody off the street that's going to know how to do it. So we're trying to be proactive and make sure that we're ahead of the, the, the game on that. And then also uh, internet or information and technology committee has been meeting. I believe there might be another meeting yet today. Um, there has been approval for a new website. And I think we're, is it July, Nathan, that we should, put, we should very likely see a new county website up and running. So, and this is going to be a .gov website too, correct? correct. Okay. Fancy. So that's all I have for committee reports, Evans. Uh, right before I went on vacation, I was, uh, I'm on the election committee for HDC and the old chair and vice chair are stepping down. They're still probably staying on the board, but we're electing a new vice chair and chair. I missed the meeting following that because I was on vacation. So I assume when I get back in two weeks that there is a new chair and vice chair. You're going to be the new chair. Yeah, I was no. going to say, if you miss the meeting, no. you're going to be just the just know which no. one. <laughs> My name wasn't in that hat. I made sure. And uh, so, but there's a I, I'm pretty positive who's now the chair and vice chair, but I won't say names until I know for sure when I get back. So, but expect that. Very good. Anything further, Nate? No, that means thank you. Mm -hmm. I have uh, emergency management tomorrow night, but that's I don't have any report. Okay, thank you. Reach everyone's reports. I see no unfinished business. So we're going to move directly into new business, and we're going to start out with FA 54 four two four approval of twenty twenty four current claims. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby approves the payment of current claims for 2024 identified on the accounts payable report dated March 26, 2024, the General Bank account in the amount of $382,610.81. I have a motion from Finance Chairman Sarkella. Do I have support? Support. Support from Commissioner Ehart. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Moving on to FA 055 24 budget adoption amendments, appropriations, and transfers. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby approves the following amendments and establishes the following accounts as listed. I have a motion from Finance Chairman Sarkella. Support from Sports. Commissioner Ballard. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Moving on to FA 056-24, award and authorization of bid to purchase picnic tables and fire rings, Parks Commission. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby awards and authorizes Jamestown Advanced Product for low bid at a cost not to exceed $19,901.88 for the purpose of replacing 40 picnic tables and 19 fire rings for Forrester Evergreen and Lexington Parks with funding from the Parks Millage for immediate approval. Support. I have a motion from Finance Chairman Sarkala. Support from Commissioner Ballard. Is there discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Moving on to FA 057-24, approval of agreement for improvements, Evergreen Park. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby approves an agreement between Evergreen Park and the Board of County Road Commissioners for the purpose of limestone patching with 290 tons of 22A limestone from Wallace Quarry Pit at 3456 a ton, with a total cost not to exceed $10,022.40. With funding from the Parks Millage and further authorizes the board chairman to sign the agreement for immediate approval. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Sarkella, supported by Commissioner Heberling. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Moving on to FA 058 24, award and authorization of bid for vehicle equipment, Sheriff's Office. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby awards and authorizes Arrowhead Upfitters Incorporated with Pier. Michigan, the bid for two sets of vehicle equipment to outfit two 2024 Chevy Tahoe 9C1 police package vehicles at a cost of $15,073 each for a total cost not to exceed $30,146 with funding from the Uniform Services Vehicle Line. I have a motion from Commissioner Sarkella, supported by Commissioner Moody. Is there a discussion? Yeah, I just want to add, um, Mr. Chairman, um, when uh, our under sheriff was in here uh, last month for the meeting, we went through this in our finance so uh, the question was asked of uh, every time each time we um purchase a new vehicle and they're what five to six years of longevity on um we we also add these things to the to the vehicle and the question was asked why we couldn't use them in fact i think i asked the question for the next vehicle the biggest problem is technology changes so fast mm -hmm. and uh the second issue uh you can't take you can't take what was made for 
a Ford Explorer and put in a Tahoe or vice versa Tahoe. So um, it, it's legitimate and it's needed. So, um, you know, the longevity is, is outlived itself, but then we get the next vehicle. So, right. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. And we want our policemen to have the latest and the best, right? Right. Well, they they got to have this stuff, or yeah. uh, otherwise people would be moving around inside the car on them. Any further discussion related to FA058-24? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Moving on to FA059-24, award and authorization of bid for radio equipment at Sheriff's Office. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby awards and authorizes AMK services of Johnstown on the bid for two Harris XL 200P mobile radio south fit two Chevrolet Tahoe police vehicles at a cost of $7,972.90 each and total cost not to exceed $15,945.80 with funding from the Uniformed Services Vehicle Line. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Sarkella, supported by Commissioner E. Hart. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Lastly, we have NFA 006-24, schedule a public hearing for the Michigan Community Development Block Grant. San Lake County Board of Commissioners hereby schedules public hearing on April 16, 2024, for the purpose of receiving comments for the Community Development Block Grant to update playground equipment at the Village of Peck Park and further directs the Board Secretary to publish the legal notice. Support. I have a motion from Commissioner Sarkella, supported by Commissioner Ballard. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. <laughs> that will conclude new business. At this time, I will call for general public comments. Are there any general public comments today? Yes. Welcome. Okay. I'm Kim Thompson. And Greg, Representative Greg Alexander is going to have a community town hall, a petition drive for local control of wind and solar operations tomorrow night at Liberty Lanes at 5.30. And if you've not signed the petition to bring zoning back to the locals, to this level and the township level instead of the state, then come on out tomorrow night because we'll be there with the petition. For anybody who's a who votes, who's registered to vote. And it doesn't matter what county, as long as you're registered to vote, can sign this petition. Kim, is there any, oh, it's somebody very nice that uh, Representative Alexander. Any, any of us on the Republican Party? I think that's all of us. And there's petitions at uh, Sandhill and Above and Beyond and Deckerville has petitions. Okay. And so does the, uh, the one right on Main Street remote cars, where they sell the remote vehicles, the things of that, they've got it. Or it's not where else, Dale? Well, we don't have them there, but Forrester again, she said we could have them there. Mark's Barbershop. Mark's Barbershop. Okay. So yeah, and any one of us that's a, a Republican, <laughs> the Republican Party walks down, mm -hmm. I've got them, Dale's got them. Wayne? Anybody else? Yeah, well, I know they, you know, they've been circulating at all my township meetings too. I'm not sure who all yeah, that. They did my township meeting already, so. Okay. Very good. So yes, well, so everybody's aware. <laughs> Thank you for the Thank information. You. Are there any further public comments today? <clears throat> Hi, my name's Diane Ferguson and uh, just like to bring the board's attention to the fact that at Greg's Alexander's February 23rd meeting, I was assaulted and we have a group of people running around. Apparently it ain't the first time that they came and disrupted the meetings. There was one in January over in Marlette, I'm being told. And um, it looks like the same gentleman that was there was possibly there in February, too. So um, just giving you a fair warning that there's some, it's not one, it's a group of people. At Gray Alexander's meeting, they were wearing green t-shirts, all, majority of them. I couldn't tell if all of them were because some had their clothes, you know, coats zipped up over it. 
with those that you could read what their t-shirt said, said San Lan County Democratic Party. So take it for what it's worth. There's also a second petition circulating in this town called Ax MI Tax, which eliminates all property taxes. And between Ax MI Tax and the common the bills that you know, the you got the sewer bill that's uh, been there for a while, but uh, at what point are we going to get taxed off our land? So I'm all for it. And I support um, ending property taxes. You'll find another fund, another way. So we've got a secondary school system running now at 8.7 billion. We got a global Michigan that we're funding now. Nobody ever voted on these things. So it's time to tighten the strings, the reins. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any further public comments today? Seeing none, we will move on. There's no need for closed session or approval of closed session minutes. I will entertain a motion to adjourn our BOC meeting at 1 minute. I have a motion for Commissioner Ehart, supported by Commissioner Sartella. All in favor, single by saying aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you.